Peace. Such love. Amen. Such love. If I ever had a sermon that I feel pertains to this morning, this was it. Keeping your sanity in a crazy world. Hello? And it ain't getting any better. But for us, it isn't getting any worse. <laughs> Look up for your redemption draweth nigh. No doubt that this world has turned crazy beyond anything we have ever imagined, isn't it? I mean, I believe that things are changing all the time. Things that were right years ago seem to be wrong. And things that were wrong seem to be right. It's like upside down, isn't it? Isaiah said, woe to those who call evil good and good evil. And we're in a day and an age where we're looking at things that were not even spoke of, not even thought of. In fact, it was kept in the closet. It was kept away from society. It was a scourge. But now it is so out there. It's up to us to say when the last straw is the last straw. When are God's people going to say, hey, I am sick and tired of being sick and tired? Amen. When is God's people going to say, hey, I'm going to live for the Lord and the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Amen. He maketh me to lay down in green pastures and he restoreth my soul. Amen. If ever there was a time, this is that time. For the Christian, this should not be a difficult time. We should be able to grasp what God teaches us to do and do it. We should be able to grasp what God asks us to do and do it. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. Sharper than a two-edged sword, splitting the marrow from the bone. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, Lord God, I ask your blessing upon everything that was, is, and will be done. For Father, you are glorified in this place. You are lifted up in the smiles of your people. In the hearts of your people, there's a rejoicing. There's a, a, a moving in their body, Lord. There's a moving in their emotion. They're driven, Lord God, to do the right. And they love you with all their heart. And Father, we lift you up in the sanctuary. We lift you up in our homes. We lift you up wherever we go. Your name is on our lips and now Lord I ask you to hide me behind the cross of Calvary that it not be me that is seen but your word be seen and the spirit speak to your people and the word come alive in Jesus name I pray the church said amen do you have your Bible do you have your Bible Turn to Philippians, the fourth chapter. I shared a scripture with my brother the other day, Philippians 3.13 and 14, which touches my soul. But today I'm looking at another scripture. It's a little lengthy this morning, but we have time. I figure if I get you out of here at 12.30, you'll be okay. Amen. Amen. But if I get you out at noon, you'll be okay too. But I don't think your roast will burn. I don't think the ham will taste bad after you get done here. I think it'll be all right. Because God's still on the throne. Yes, yes. Amen. 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 Praise God. Philippians 4, 1 through 9. Therefore, my beloved and longed for brethren, my joy and crown. So stand fast in the Lord, beloved. I implore you, Odia, and longed for brethren. I implore Sinchi, 
Shintaichi, excuse me, I always have a problem with that name. Shintaichi, to be in the same mind in the Lord. And I urge you also, true companion, help these women who labored with me in the gospel. With Clement also and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. I look around the church right now and I think all of us working together for God's good. All of us are workers together in Christ. All of us are making known His glory. Amen. Wow. Amen. One out of 30, that ain't bad. We're all workers together with Christ Amen. to see His glory come forth. And I looked at this saying of Scripture, and it says that their name is written in the book of life. Know ye not today when you stand in God, God stands in you. You have your name written in the Lamb's book of life. And you don't have to worry about your tomorrows. You don't have to worry about the things that the world worries about. You just have to look up. Your redemption draweth nigh. Praise God. Hallelujah. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. I looked at that and I almost had a shout fit when I saw that. Rejoice in the Lord, it says in the fourth verse. Always again I will say... Rejoice. rejoice! I said rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. Again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. What is it to rejoice in the Lord? Find that everything makes you happy about God. Hallelujah. Find that no matter what's going on, God makes you happy. Hallelujah. Did you wake up this morning, come out and decide you were going to be happy this morning? <laughs> or did you wake up with your chin in a wheelbarrow and go, I just can't praise God today. Church, we came here for a reason. Find God. We came here to allow Him to have His being and His way in us and to give Him the honor and glory and find out that in our life there are benefits to serving God. We should be able to grasp with all of God's teachings and do it. You know, it's one thing to hear it and be hearers of the Word. But isn't it better that we be not hearers only, but doers also? Amen. Amen. So when you hear the Word of God, do it. Amen. The Word of God is sure. Sure as it will ever be. Doing what God wants us to do should give us a joy and a rejoicing of our hearts. Satisfaction in this life is what I want. Amen. I said, I'm satisfaction in this life is what I'm looking for. Amen. My satisfaction isn't about what I'm I have. It isn't about my things. It's about what's inside my spirit. Amen. The things of God that bring forth fruit in our lives. Yes. Amen. Bring satisfaction in our life. Yes. And I looked at that and in Philippians 1 as a Christian, this is our greatest blessing to have a relationship with God and Jesus. How many of you have that relationship? Amen. Shout amen. 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 Ephesians 1 3 said, All spiritual blessings are in Christ. Yes. Amen. All spiritual blessings are in Christ. <laughs> But we've got to stand firm in the Lord. Amen. We've got to stand firm in the Lord. And there's a lot of ways to do this. One of them is to work to bring peace. If you have your word, I want you to hear this. Rejoice in the fourth verse. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, Rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, 
With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Boy, I could preach a message just on that one scripture. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Oh, church, come on now. This isn't my words. This is His. This should bring things into your spirit and into your mind that tell you no matter how crazy this world is getting, no matter how upside down man is making it, there are men in high places who are saying, I will not bow to Baal. I will turn toward God and I will see this change in my life and I want to see the change in other people's lives too. I am not afraid to bring out the name of Jesus Christ. It is salvation and it is joy unspeakable full of glory into my life. A lot of people, someone comes to them and says, are you a Christian? And they go, yeah. Are you a Christian? Yeah. Are you one of those Christians? Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. I'm going to trap you. Lord. We're one of those Christians that love God. I'm glad to be saved, Holy Ghost filled, tongue tucking, tied, paying, blood washed, sanctified child of God. I'm not going to shut up. I'm not going to rise up until I see Jesus coming in the clouds. I'm going to give Him all the glory and the honor He deserves. I'm going to give Him all that is due Him. In a world that's gone crazy, we can be sane. Hallelujah. We are sane. We have the mind of Christ. I went to a place one day and I tried not to share anything that I've ever done. But it was called Port of Hope. I don't think I said that. But I went to a place called Port of Hope. Just got saved. On fire for the Lord. Of course, I could be on fire because I was about Kobe's age. <laughs> now, I don't have the jump as high. But I do have the heart that rises up. And I went in there. I was laying carpet for the director and I was also putting in uh, from the roof to the floor a uh, mirror. And I got this all done, but while I was there, I was telling him how I was delivered from alcohol and drugs and all of those things. And, and he looked at me and he says, I'd like for you to share that. And I thought, cool, I got another job. <laughs> Hello, I'm going to tell them how it happened. And I got there and they came into the room. There was about 60, 75 people. And I began to share my testimony. I began to tell them I am not an addict. I am not addicted. I am delivered. I have been changed by the blood of the Lamb. I am a new person in Christ. When I was in that place that was so dark, I had no boundaries. Jesus came into my life. He showed me where the boundaries were. And I began to walk in Him. I began to talk in Him. And I found in my salvation, I didn't want to do the things I used to do. I wanted to live for the Lord because I loved Him. And He delivered me. You know, they never let me come back. <laughs> because I told them they don't have to be sick. Oh, well, don't you know it's genetic? I don't care. God built the genes, hello? And He can change your genes to a dress if He needs to. Amen. God can do anything but fail. Anything Amen. but fail. And I get excited about that, and I'm trying not to get too excited here. We want to get excited. Uh, but the Bible tells me here to work for peace. Work to bring peace. There have been times in my life I did not succeed. Because I was a ruddy-complected 
warrior, sort of like David. Yeah. I was one who was willing to step up to the plate if someone wanted to step up to the plate with me. Never back down from a fight. Amen. But you know what? I didn't learn how to be gentle. Amen. But he's teaching me. Because gentleness will turn away wrath. Be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. The Bible tells me. I've tried to live that. And I've had success and I've had failures in that. But the Bible tells me here that in Philippians 2, 3, people who are Christian should get along. Isn't it sad that Christians do not get along? I was sharing with someone last night and I said, it's a wonder that we have anybody in our churches the way they bite on each other. But I thank God that we can get along if we realize that we have a place in the body of Christ and in that place we can bring unity and we can build up the body of Christ. We can lift up the body of Christ. We can lift this body up if we lift up Jesus. Amen. We got to lift up the Lord. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And that's who we want to draw people to is the Lord, isn't it? Amen. We can share the same blessings. We can share the same trials. Because I need you to pray for me today. Because tomorrow you need, may need me to pray for you. Amen. Amen. And when we pray for one another, it's really hard to have a fight. If we're spending our time praying for one another, how can we fight? That's right. You know, we have things in the body of Christ all over the world that are pretty crazy because of one thing. We are yet carnal. But God can pull down those strongholds. Amen. And there are many strongholds that God has pulled down for us, hasn't He? Yeah. To help us to become more like Him. I want to be more like Jesus, don't you? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I went in for surgery one time and they cut me a nine-inch scar in my side on the left. And I said, you know, I wanted to be more like Jesus, but come on, guys, this is ridiculous. <laughs> You'll get that at three. Sometimes... We don't realize, but our job is to help people learn to get along with each other. Love will go a long way in your life. Not just the love you have for your loved ones, but love for one another. Amen. said, by this you will know they are my disciples, for they have love for one another. In the world, they, they love because misery loves company. You ever notice someone wants to go to a bar, they want to take someone with them? Hell, oh, I'll buy. Don't worry. Well, yeah, because misery loves company. Hello. But we don't have to go to that bar to find that new wine. Hello. We don't have to go to a bar and do those things because let me tell you something. We don't have hangovers. We don't have to pray to porcelain gods. Hello. Because when the Spirit of the Lord comes on you and you find yourself drunk in the Spirit, you won't want anything else. Amen. Amen. Ooh, now I got the tingles. Hello? I didn't say the shingles. We'll pray that out. Hello? But I got the tingles. They're here. They're definitely here. Hello? I was laughing earlier because I knew what you were doing, praise God, because you know the Spirit of the Lord comes in many ways on many different people. And I want you to realize you can be free to serve the Lord because He who is free is free indeed. It's not for me to put the do's and don'ts on you. Hello? And the day that we have legalisms, as some do, we have 
gotten rid of and ushered out the grace of God. So we need to help one another to get along so that we aren't living in the law, but living above the law, living in Christ. If we can do that, we should be able to get along with anybody. Hello? We used to sing a song, Somebody Cares for You. And there's no brother like Jesus. Church, there's no brother like Jesus. The flesh will fail. I will fail. Anyone you see on TV will fail. They are not a God. I am not God. We are all workers working toward the prize of the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus, working together. But you know what I found out just the other day? It hurts when I get my thumb cut. Yeah, get that at three. You got a lot to do at three o'clock today. If you look at your Bible, I want to share something with you. I'm just about to preach. Praise God. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. My brother said, Be bold in the Lord. Be bold. Go to God for you have access to the throne of God. You can go boldly unto God. Ask what you will and it shall be done. But to him that believeth all things are possible. God. Church, I'm not preaching happy, happy. I'm preaching the truth of the word this morning. Hallelujah. All you got to do is realize that it is hard for many to do the will of God because they allow the flesh to dictate where they go rather than allow the Spirit to dictate where they go and what they do. But when we allow God to have free reign in our life, things will change. Another way to say that is trust in the Lord. That's the nutshell. That's the crux of the matter. We have to come to a place in our lives where we trust Him. The Bible tells us it's better to trust God than to put your trust in man. That's in Psalms 118.8 which is actually the middle of the Bible. Did you know that? But anyway, the theme runs throughout the Bible of that Scripture. If you read it, the Bible tells us it is better to trust in God than to trust in man. Blessed is the man whose trust is the Lord, but cursed is the man whose trust is the arm of flesh. You know what's caused me a lot of problems in my life? Trust issues. Hello? Yeah. Amen. I know it's just me, see? I, that's why I said me and made it me. Because I didn't want it to apply to you. Because I, I know that you guys are so advanced than I. Maybe some. Others, I know you as well as you know me. Hello? Hello. <laughs> and I love you anyway. Praise the Lord. Shared something the other day. I think that applies right here that I wasn't planning on putting in here, but a friend is someone who knows you but doesn't condemn you, no matter where you are. A friend is a friend always. Sister Nancy had a, 
uh, meeting the other day, went out to lunch with a friend. They have been friends since the sixth grade. Their birthday is only a few days apart, and every year, if they can, they get together. But they've been friends all these years. Nancy's a radical Pentecostal. Hello. Speaks in tongues, prays in tongues, ties, loves the Lord, does all those things. Hello. And her friend is right there with her in one way or another. I've had a friend that I met in the wrestling at Boise High. And we were wrestling one day and we all got there and took showers and, and we're heading home and all of a sudden I walk up next to this guy and we wound up walking within three blocks of each other. We became best of friends and to this day we still talk to each other all year long. And it's interesting how when you have a friend like that, it's like you never finished the conversation. I went to Modesto, saw my pastor there. I love him with all my heart. He was a good man, is a good man, and he's fighting the battle that he's going to win. And the interesting thing is, got down there and we just started talking about this church, talking about people that we knew in this church, talking about all the things. It was as though we'd never been apart. So much for 